Welcome to Rotten Damians. Today we are discussing all Edgar Allan Poe references in the fall of the House of Usher episode 2. If you missed part 1 of this series, be sure to check it out. I will have it linked below. Let's begin this video with the most obvious reference to Poe's work, The Mask of the Red Death. This short story was published in May 1842 and it follows a prince named Prospero. Prospero's people are fighting for their lives when a strange contagious disease known as the Red Death begins rapidly spreading. The prince ignores his people's cries for help and decides to throw a party instead. He invites thousands of his high class friends to his castle and shuts them inside of the property, preventing anyone from coming in or out. He does this as a means of protection against the Red Death. Once the party begins, we find out that Prospero has multiple rooms which all possess a different colour. These rooms signify different stages of life, and the final room is a shade of red. The partygoers purposely ignore the final room because it makes them feel uneasy. Soon, a figure with a skeleton mask crashes the party and lures Prospero into the final red room. Prospero confronts the figure and he and many others collapse onto the floor. The figure had the red death infecting Prospero and many others. The TV show loosely follows the story, hence Prospero in both the show and story seem to be out of touch with reality and only concerned with hedonistic ideals like a party. For example, his family are under legal attack and rather than bind with them, he hosts an orgy. Weird. Secondly, Prospero in the show and the story invite high profile guests to their party. The common folk are excluded. Thirdly, Verna wears a skull mask and seduces Prospero in a room with red lighting. She gives him a chance to call off the party, however he does not oblige and he and countless others become a victim of the acid rain. The TV show changes the ending of the story, however the message remains the same. The message is that Prospero's indifference to others and his arrogance leads to his downfall. In the TV show, Rufus Griswold is Roderick Usher's boss, the head of Fortunato. Roderick pitches him the idea of Ligodon, and ultimately Rufus steals the idea and cuts him out of the deal. But we all know this, what we don't know is that Rufus got his name from a real life person named Rufus Wilmot Griswold. This Rufus was a poetry editor who published a few of Poe's works. Poe did not enjoy his anthologies and publicly criticised them which led to a long and public feud between the figures. The feud was so intense that Rufus even published a harsh eulogy about Poe. In the TV show, Landor Farmer is the name of Fortunato's competitor, whom they acquired. Landor Farmer got its name from Poe's 1849 short story titled Landor's Cottage. The story is not a horror novel like his previous works, it is instead simply a beautiful descriptive piece outlining a cottage. Metze, which is short for Metzengustein, I uh, most definitely butchered that pronunciation, is the name of the pharmacist who created Ligodon. Metzengustein is also the name of Poe's first published story. The story follows two feuding families where in the end one of the family members rides a stolen horse into a burning barn. The message behind the story is a warning against becoming your own downfall, which is a common theme in the fall of the House of Usher, hence we see it with Roderick, Prospero and many more. In episode 2, Lenore is building a wooden ship with her father. She names the ship Grampus. You should name it the Grampus. The Grampus. Which is the name of the ship in Poe's novel, The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym. The final easter egg I have for you guys is the poem Annabel Lee. In the TV show Roderick Usher's first wife is named Annabel Lee. She is an angel who sees the best of Roderick and always tries to do the right thing. It is thought that Poe wrote the poem for his late wife and cousin Virginia. Throughout the TV show we frequently hear Roderick recite lines from the poem. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and for me to reach my goals. Let me know in the comments down below if I missed any references and your thoughts on the show. Thank you for watching and be sure to check out part 1 of this series. I'll see you next week.